Hey there everyone, Hatayish here and welcome to the news section. In this section, we are going to talk more about the control flow statements, especially if and else, switch in case and something which can control the flow of your program moving into one direction or the other direction. Now, in case you have studied these if and else in any other language, they are pretty much similar, but there are some gotchas that you have to take care of them in the Golang. Let's go ahead and create a new uh, folder here. So let's call this one as if else. We are not going to be spending uh, individual time on if and then another video on else. They are pretty simple. We can just take them down in just one video. So we'll be saving some time on this case. Let's go ahead and open this up into integrated terminal. That's fine. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and first initialize the mod. So go mod in it. And let's call this one as if else. There we go. We don't need much as of now. We'll run the program a little bit later up. Uh, right now, let's go ahead and start a package and call this one as simply function main. And just like always, fumt is necessary. And let's call this one as if else in Golang. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, now let's go ahead and try the very basic and simple possible case onto the Golang. Let's just say you have a, a login count. Let's just say you have an application, something like Learn Code Online, where you keep in track of what is the login count of an average user. There's a flag there. And there are some internal algorithms which triggers some notification for you as an admin uh, based on how many time user is uh, logging in into the application. So let's just say uh, we somehow put up an arbitrary number of 23. It can be anything 15, 10, whatever you are comfortable with. And we want to put up a message uh, based on the number of counts. So right now, let's just go ahead and say that we will put up the, in the result as a message, uh, which is going to be a string. Now, I just don't want to put up any message on that. I want to have different message based on the number of counts. So we're going to use obviously if and else on that. So we're going to say that if the login count is less than 10, then I want to put up something different as a message. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, result, you're going to get a message which will say regular user. That sounds okay. And uh, there we go. Looks like, yeah, this needs to go up. My bad. So this is what we have. And at the end, we need to print up these messages. So at the end of it, I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to just print up this result. So this makes <laughs> much more sense now. Okay, this is all. Uh, this is all what we got as of now. If the login count is less than 10, then only the result will get a value of regular user, regular user. Otherwise, it will get nothing because that's what the code says. Now, a couple of interesting stuff uh, which you really should keep in mind that you are not allowed to actually move these curly braces onto the next line. This is something which has to do with the Go internal structure. And remember, the lexer, this is all about it. So having an opinion about, uh, I like this style of code or the previous style, you don't have much option here. You need to go back onto this syntax. And this is the only way how you handle this one. As soon as you open up these curly braces, the lexer will not kick in and will not put up these colons uh, for you, semicolons. So that's all about it. So in this case, obviously, as we are going to print, the result will get nothing because the count is definitely not less than uh, 10. So in that case, you can go ahead and say else and you can put up some result message result. And that's going to be saying that, hey, uh, something else. So that's the one way, obviously, but you are probably not going to be using it this way. Probably you want to check for another case. In that case, you can go ahead and put up an else and you can use another if statement alongside with the else statement. So let's go ahead and do one more time. So we're going to say that if the login count is uh, probably uh, greater than 10, then we're going to put up a message, uh, which is going to be something like result, which is going to be a uh, watch out. So yeah, something like that. And probably in the other case else as well. So you can go ahead and put up something on the else. Like if it is greater than 10, it is less than 10. You can go ahead and put up it is exactly as 10 as well because we haven't checked the condition what happens when the login count is exactly 10. So we can either go ahead and put up a if statement and say if it is equal equals 10 or we can simply say that in all the other cases because there's only one case left up, uh, we can go ahead and say that result is going to be exactly uh, 10 login count. So yeah. We got that message up here. Let's go ahead and try to run this onto a different scenario to see that what kind of uh, syntax does it make and what kind of sense does it make. So let's go ahead and say go run main.go. In this case, it says uh, if else in Golang, obviously, and then it says watch out because 
the number is definitely greater than 10. But what happens when the number actually becomes 10 itself? Let's go ahead and try that out and run that. It says exactly 10. So all the cases are being handled nicely by our system that we have designed. Pretty basic system. Okay. Now there are a couple of more things into this uh, Golang if and else, especially two more. Let me go ahead and walk you through with that. Uh, you not only need to actually create the variable in advance and then check them out, you can create them on the go as well. For example, let's just say you are checking for a number, whether that's an even or odd, you can go ahead and do that. For example, you want to check for nine. Uh, you can just go ahead and say, I want to module you with two. And if the result is zero, then obviously you are even. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, that, go ahead and please print out that number is even. And this needs to be in the lowercase. And in the else case, obviously we know that if the remainder is not zero, then the other case kicks in, which is going to say that number is odd. So yeah, that also happens and pretty nicely. So we can see that we can actually go ahead and do some things on the go. So number is odd, obviously nine is odd. So there we go. Nice and easy work with that. Now, one last thing I would like to mention here, which is like the super important thing, and you'll be seeing this being utilized quite a lot, especially uh, in the cases of web handling, web request handling. So let's go ahead and for that. Okay, there's a special syntax in which you can go ahead and initialize a variable and directly put up a value into it. For example, you can go ahead and say this value is three. And then especially here, you can put up a semicolon and keep on moving for checking up here. So for example, if you just say if the number is uh, less than 10, again, the same stuff, we're gonna go ahead and say that, hey, go ahead and print it out. And we're going to say that num is less than 10, obviously. And in all the other cases, we're going to go ahead and say else and fumped, and we're going to say num is not <laughs> less than 10. There we go. And yes, this is a little bit of a weird syntax for a lot of you because here we can see that we are initializing it and assigning value at the same time and then we are putting up a semicolon and then we are checking it on the go. Sometimes value comes in from the web request and you just assign it on the go and do the checking on the go and this is what all it means. So let's go ahead and try to run this to see that if we are making any mistake or everything is fine. So we obviously see that the number is odd, that's fine and nice, and number is less than 10, which obviously it is. So this is quite a common syntax that you're going to see, and this also brings up to the concept that you might have seen uh, a lot of time, we're gonna go ahead and see that uh, something comes in as underscore or error, we have seen that uh, the comma okay syntax, and in that case, you're going to see not equals to nil, so you can check if there is any value or not inside it. If there is no value, that means it is nil, so we don't have to worry. So something I, kind of a reverse syntax of not equals to nil is a pretty common stuff, so I'm gonna just keep it up there. Uh, do a little bit more research, try to have some programs which helps you to understand a bit more of the logical flow in the Golang. As again, uh, this is something a little bit more that you need practice if very first time you are seeing all these if and else syntax. If you have coded a little bit while in other languages, surely this should be a piece of cake. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.